You're watching Mountain Computers. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mountain Computers from an actual studio today. So, uh, today I was going to go ahead and show you guys basically what my setup is. Not everything is permanent, and please ignore a lot of the cable management. As much as that's probably going to stick around for a little while, I'm not planning on it being permanent. So, um, today's basically just a showing off of what I have uh, around sort of video. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, I made a video on this Acer CB281HK monitor. Um, yeah, I guess it's been about a year ago now, and I'm still using it, and it's been working pretty great for me. I've got a Blue Yeti microphone, which is not what you're listening to right now, uh, unfortunately. But I will probably be using that in voiceovers for future videos. So, um, I've got a Corsair K70 Lux RGB keyboard, and I've had that for a little while now. Um, so far I've been really liking it. I mean, I had a uh, keyboard with Cherry MX brown switches, which is the same thing as what's in here before, and it's a key switch type that I really like, so... I mean, it's not been much of a change in that regard. And, um... They'll, this one has uh, the RGB element uh, to it, though, so I can set up key profiles for, say, when I'm programming or playing different games. And that's really handy. So, um, yeah. This is my the mouse that I've been using. It's a Logitech uh, G502 Proteus Spectrum. Yeah. It has an RGB uh, LED in it, too. Uh, there we go. I just have mine set to pulse white, but it turns off when it hasn't been moving for a while. Um, you can see my Corsair mouse mat here. Then that's my OnePlus 3 charging. I think I'm going to be updating that fairly soon. The, the battery life on my OnePlus 3 has been getting pretty bad, and as much as I would just replace the battery otherwise, um, it's also got a small crack in the screen that you can probably see running along here. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably be getting a OnePlus 6T, I guess, if I had to pick something right now. Um, I've been pretty impressed with this OnePlus phone um, it, throughout all the time that I've had it, so I'm perfectly willing to get another OnePlus uh, phone. This is my main PC, which I think you get... yeah, I built this in a uh, video before, and it's still mostly the same. I'm going to be putting it in a video very soon, so I'm not going to spoil too much of what's in there right now, because I'm going to talk about some of the upgrades that I've made to it in that video, and do some more upgrades to it as well in that time, so um, we'll sort of gloss over that for now. I've got a Pioneer Blu-ray disk drive up here that's sort of Eh, not doing great as far as the cable management goes. Nothing around here, cable management-wise, is doing very good. It all needs work. <laughs> uh, back here I've got a few posters that I haven't put up yet. I just moved into this place um, oh, two weeks ago or so, um, maybe three, and I, I'm still getting stuff out of boxes, so <laughs> it, it's it's been a little bit uh, tough to worry about some of the minor things like putting up posters and uh, the cable management so far. Uh, this is a D-Link router which I got on Black Friday and I don't think I have the paperwork in here to be able to remember what the model number is so unfortunately I think I'm not going to be able to talk about that. Um, this is the um, what is it? Modem. There we go. <laughs> for my uh, fiber to the home internet that I've got here. It's gigabit up and down. So far I've been pretty happy with it. Um, and yeah. Um, I gave a brief 
teaser on this computer in, I think it was my last video, and I'm still planning to make that video, so don't be too upset that I haven't done that yet. It's it's coming. I know I've said it's coming for like a year now, and it, it is still coming. Um, it's a Compact Desk Pro, and this is a Dell Quiet Keys keyboard that's from the era. Um, I've got an HP mouse. It's just a regular ball mouse, but it seems to work fine. And then the gateway monitor, which you guys have seen in a couple videos before, if you've watched any of my other content. So, um, yeah, it's this whole thing t together makes up basically, well, plus this Microsoft um, Sidewinder joystick. Um, altogether, it represents a fairly wide gamut of the available computer stuff at the time, which wasn't something I did intentionally, but um, wound up happening. And I don't know, it's, it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, here you can see a couple of my guitars. That's an Epiphone uh, Les Paul. Um, man, I'm trying to remember the model number on it. It's a plus top Pro, I think is what they call it, um, in a Heritage Cherry Sunburst color scheme. And then that is a Fender Electric Acoustic Guitar, whose model number I also can't remember at this time. Um, my amplifier. Um, some of the laptops are over here that you guys have seen in uh, the same teaser that I did for the Compact Desk Pro desktop. And yeah, that video is coming eventually too. Um, but if we come over here, uh, this is something I picked up just the other day at a thrift store. It is a Cisco Systems. Um, well, here it just says 2500 series. It has the model number on the back. Uh, 2501 router. Um, I haven't learned too much about this thing yet, and I don't know if I'm even going to be able to do anything with it at all. Um, you see that, like most routers, it has a console port here where you can uh, SSH into it so that you can do management with the system, but rather than having any other uh, Ethernet ports, it has these serial ports and an AUI port, and from what I can glean online, the AUI port is where you're supposed to be able to hook up external devices, but it's through a transceiver that is apparently more expensive to get and more rare to come across than the actual router unit itself. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually utilize this in any way, shape, or form. It's a very old router uh, anyway. It's got 72-pin SIMs for RAM in it, and, um, well, if you know about PC memory in general, you understand that that comes from about the same era as the Compact Desk Pro that I have, um, and possibly just a little bit before, you know, probably dated somewhere approximately between 93 and 1999, and that's a rough guess, but, yep. Um, here is my Canon printer. It's a Pixma whose model number I can't remember. It's nothing that probably needs to get talked about too much unless someone's really interested in it. Um, I hope you guys aren't going to be able to hear the air running, but if you can, I'm sorry, it just turned on. Um, <laughs> this is my Yamaha tape deck. The right deck is broken. Um, it, it used to be able to play in one direction and then would not play any tapes in the other direction and after messing around with it for a while trying to figure out if I could engineer anything my terrible mechanical engineering skills uh, sort of did me in and I don't think I can actually get it to play in either direction out of that deck anymore. Uh, not that that matters since uh, I'm not doing tape dubbing anymore. Uh, anymore. I've never done it. Nobody's doing tape dubbing anymore. I don't think, anyway. Um, well, except for the couple uh, releases that are for, like, new coming out right now. They're not 
extremely common for those of you who I offended for saying that nobody's doing tape dubbing anymore because you're a fan of the, the tape genre or form factor. Compact cassette. There we go. Wow. I'm not talking very good today, am I? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I guess, maybe, but like also I'm not because obviously I also in some way, shape, or form enjoy the uh, the form factor too, otherwise I wouldn't have a tape deck. Um, this is a Yamaha KXW382 for those who are interested, and the, the deck A works just fine for anyone who was wondering. Um, here, I will, I will even turn it on. Um, I have to turn on my preamp in order for it to turn on. There we go. And so if I click play, you won't hear anything because I don't have my receiver set up. The front buttons on this thing don't work very well. I was considering making a video on this, but um, I didn't think that it was worth it because I was more fooling around with it than I was actually doing any real work to it um, when I was trying to get deck B to work and nothing really ever came of it. But you can see it has this nice uh, VU meter on the front when it's playing and um, yeah. Uh, this is my mobile tape deck. Uh, I think it's a Sanyo? Yes. Um, I don't know if there's anything especially interesting to say about this particular unit. I got it at a thrift store when I was living in Denver. Um, there's uh, one missing button. I've considered modeling maybe a 3D printable uh, replacement for that, but I've never gotten around to it. I've got enough projects to worry about. Maybe one day I'll get around to it, but that's uh, sort of unlikely. Um, moving up from here, you can see my preamp, which I got at the same... Did I get that at the same thrift store? I think I got it at a different one, but in the same area, actually. It might have even been the same chain, just a different uh, branch. Anyway, this is an Onkyo um, P3160, and it is a, uh, well, it's a preamplifier with built-in uh, infrared. I think it must have been one of a set of the very first things that Onkyo must have put out that had uh, remote controls since it since it does explicitly say remote controlled right up here um, and it to my surprise is compatible with um, universal remotes so um, here maybe I can demonstrate the ability to change the volume um, remotely you can see that going up and down as I hit the volume buttons on the remote. So that is pretty cool to me. I didn't even know that this uh, unit had that until I uh, moved out here and just decided uh, to take a shot in the dark with that uh, universal remote, which I already owned, um, and see if I could hook it up, and it turns out I could. So that. That turned out to be a, a pretty cool random extra thing for me. Um, and then next thing we'll look at is my turntable. This is a Technics uh, SLD30. So that's a direct drive unit and I, it says it right there, um, doesn't it? Well, it's an automatic turntable so you get uh, one touch play and stop with this button that will lift up the tone arm and set it down. If you're playing a record, lifts up the tone arm and uh, puts it away, basically. Um, there's a strobe light over here, as many of the Technics turntables of the time have, so that you can uh, appropriately adjust the speed of the platter as it spins, so that you're sure that you're getting the right playback speed. And there's a speed adjust here for going between uh, Hmm, I don't remember the inch size of records, apparently. Uh, 33 and a third RPM and 45 RPMs uh, uh, records. There's no 77... Is it, yeah, it's 78, isn't it? There's no 78 setting for this turntable, but it's not like I have any 78s anyway or a stylus to play them with, so it doesn't matter that much. Um, there is a pitch adjust here for doing the aforementioned adjustments in speed to make sure uh, with the strobe light 
that the unit is spinning at the correct speed. Uh, over here you have a repeat option, something I don't know that I find that often on a record player. Of course it's only able to repeat one side over and over, which is sort of a disadvantage. It doesn't have a way to flip the record automatically. So uh, that's a little bit of a downside, but either way, it's still a welcome feature to have if there were ever a case where I would want to use it. And then uh, here is the queuing so that uh, you can more or less pause the record. And moving over here, we'll look at my surround sound system slash receiver, at least that's what I use it as. Uh, I use the auxiliary input on the back that uses standard RCA jacks to go to the preamp which has the tape deck and the um, turntable feeding into it and then I also uh, attach my main desktop PC via optical cable up to this unit as well so I get surround sound out of that um, given where I have this whole entertainment system set right now there's uh, no really great way for me to have it hooked up. I want to take the whole thing and slide it more over into the corner here probably, but uh, it's very heavy so it will take me a little bit of time to get around to doing that. Um, <laughs> I have a couple of extra drives up here. You'll see these coming around in uh, some videos to come in the very near future I think where I'll be doing a, a PC build for um, music production and I have a, a area that we'll look at a little bit later upstairs uh, all ready and set up to do that um, so you know I was thinking I was done in this room but I am reminded of one thing that uh, you guys probably would be fairly interested in seeing and that is this this is the cardboard box home theater PC slash home media server that uh, you guys who watch my content regularly may have seen before. Um, this machine is a very different one uh, to the one that you saw then, but it's um, been upgraded incrementally, so of course I still consider it to be the same system and I'm using it for the same things that I was using the uh, other machine for too so um, I'm going to have that in an upcoming video as well so there are count them three videos that I'm going to be f probably filming today even if not tomorrow and um, so you guys should be able to look forward to those coming out very soon as I edit them and sort of incrementally release them, or at least that's my plan anyway. Um, yeah, so you'll have one video on my main PC, one on my uh, server as I do some uh, different stuff with it, and then one on a whole new build that's going to be my music production PC. Um, what else is there to talk about? The stuff that's down here, maybe. Um, these are some PlayStation Portable games. I'm going to quickly make a side note on this game, Astonishia Story, which is a re-release of a, a Korean game by the company Sonori, uh, I think would be how you say that. Um, and um, well, it originally came out in the 90s for DOS, and uh, this re-release is done rather well, um, with the uh, caveat that you may have to ignore some of the uh, bad English translation stuff here and there. Um, really a hidden gem of a game, I would say. Although it does show that it's uh, DOS era, a type game. Um, well, I, I wasn't going to go on a tangent on this. I'm going to wind up doing it, aren't I? Um, this game uh, was re-released for Windows as well, uh, around the Windows 2000 or XP era, I think, as Astonishia Story R, which had updated graphics and uh, 
sound as well. Um, although Astonishia Story R was only released in Korean and in Korea, just like the original DOS version of the game, this is a re-release of the Astonishia Story R with updated graphics and sound. So, uh, it, the combat system still plays a little bit like the uh, old one, of course, being that it's essentially the same game, but it really, really is uh, a worthwhile game to play if you happen to see it somewhere or can get a hold of Astonishia Story R and aren't bothered by doing the translation yourself. I can understand how that's a high barrier of entry for many people. Um, there's always the possibility of emulating it too, I suppose. Um, this is my tape collection, minus one, which I think is sat up uh, up here. That's a Glen Campbell uh, tape. I'm not going to try and go into probably all of these right now, but I will make note of a couple particular ones that are of interest, maybe. Um, so uh, there is one by the Bangles here and uh, another album by Jim Croce here. Uh, and then I have a Simon and Garfunkel uh, album from their... Uh, I don't know what this album is called. I guess it's the Greatest Hits album. It has a lot of really good music on it. But uh, this, this cassette is... Um, seen Better Days. And it makes a terrible squealing noise anytime you... Uh, try and play it on a machine and it will basically uh, run the the speed down so slow that you you won't be hearing music you'll be hearing just a garbled mess so yeah um, moving on this is uh, some of the different software that I have this is mist I got it at a uh, thrift store in Denver as well a really oddball one that uh, wasn't one that I would typically go to, but I happened to see this in there. They charged me not the labeled two bucks for it, but instead I think like 79 cents, so that was pretty good. I've tried playing Myst a couple times on my Windows 98 PC, the Compact Desk Pro that is, and I haven't been particularly impressed, but uh, I don't often have that much time to sit down and really get involved in a game, uh, especially a puzzle type game like Myst. Um, anymore so uh, unfortunately that may just sit around for quite a while here are some old movies uh, some are on VHS cassette which I don't currently have a way of playing right now the uh, I don't know if I've ever showed it off I, I had an old CRT which uh, when I was living with Daniel my junior year of college um, we found in the alleyway as we find many things apparently and uh, it was working and had a built-in VHS player that uh, worked well enough for us. So I don't have that anymore. Um, it is back in Montana. My parents are using it. So those are just sitting around. And then in this cabinet, I have my vinyl collection for the turntable. And um, in here, I've got, I don't know if there's anything that's incredibly interesting for anyone. I will put up a... Uh, a time code on the screen right here uh, for the time that you should skip to if you don't want to see any of this vinyl stuff uh, and after that we'll go upstairs and look around at what I have up there so here is Fleetwood Mac's Rumors that's a reissue not an original of course um, so uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, I'm realizing that I have my Led Zeppelin IV album up by the turntable, too, so th I have that also a, as a repressing. This is a, uh, a Columbia Musical Treasury, The Fabulous 50s, and it's a one of those collection albums that doesn't have a particularly high quality uh, recordings on it, or they're not pressed particularly well with a fair bit of compression in the audio, so that uh, it doesn't sound that great, unfortunately, but it uh, has some interesting songs on it. Here is a Bobby Gentry and Glenn Campbell album that I got at a thrift store for two bucks. I assume it has to be original. Um, 
because I don't think anybody would bother to repress this particular album. <laughs> uh, here is an original copy of Glen Campbell's Rhinestone Cowboy. Here is Roy Clark, the Entertainer of the Year. Uh, I picked up this album at a uh, used stuff store in Billings, Montana when I was there, particularly because it has the 12th Street Rag on it, um, a song by Roy Clark that's really good. If you've never seen that, you should look up a video on YouTube of him playing that, because it is pretty dang good. <laughs> Here's my Daft Punk Discovery uh, a gatefold album with uh, two discs. Um, this is something that I, I really enjoy and listen to, probably as one of my uh, most listened to albums on vinyl. Here is Clint Eastwood singing some cowboy songs. Um, some that I particularly liked from playing Fallout New Vegas with and a mod that adds a lot more of that kind of western swing type music so um, Clint Eastwood's not a particularly notably good singer so uh, if you were looking to unless you really like Clint Eastwood I would say pass on this but there's some good songs on there um, just not great renditions of them maybe <laughs> Uh, here's Tom T. Hall's Greatest Hits. I have not much of an idea of when this was pressed, but uh, it's in, uh, it's got some good songs on it, and um, so that's why I picked that up. Let's see if I can get these to sit up here, huh? Uh, here is George Jones' Country Music. I think the only reason I picked this up is because the race is on is on it. Um, is it? Yep. There we are. The race is on. Here is Kiss Alive 2, a live album by Kiss, and I suppose it must have been their second one. This is an album that I was uh, given by my parents for uh, from when I graduated university, and um, I don't think I've listened to it yet. If I did, it was during a time when I was doing something else at the same time. I don't really like live albums that much in the first place, and then uh, on top of that, it, it's Kiss. Not that I hate Kiss, but they're not my favorite thing in the world, so... <laughs> Here is Loggins and Messina, uh, So Fine. I believe that these two uh, are original pressings, not reissued, partially because of the battered state of them, uh, or at least they're outer jackets, and then uh, partially because, again, I don't think anybody would reissue these uh, particular albums. Um, but this was also one that I received as a, uh, a gift from my parents for when I graduated university. Here is Roger Miller's uh, Golden Hits, and it's got a lot of my favorite Roger Miller songs that uh, I grew up with. Uh, so that's probably more of the reason why I tend to enjoy those songs. Um, but, you know, they have kind of that western swing to them that uh, I enjoy from the Fallout universe. Here's Anne Murray's Let's Keep It That Way. I believe, of course, again, that this is another original pressing, and because I don't know that anybody is reissuing these, so um, it's a fairly good album. I'm not really that into Anne Murray. My parents uh, really enjoy Anne Murray, and uh, she was, uh, it was one of her songs that was their wedding song, so, yeah. Um, I, I have that. There's the best of Peter, Paul, and Mary, Ten Years Together. Uh, I don't even know that I've listened to this album yet, but uh, yeah, I like Peter, Paul, and Mary pretty well, folk music in general. Uh, here is Pink Floyd's The Wall. This is a repressing, but um, The Wall is another album that I really like, and this is probably, again, one of my more uh, listened to albums out of my collection. This is Piper's Can't Wait. This is a pretty unique album and has sort of its own story. Um, 
For those of you who know Billy Squire, Billy Squire, before becoming a solo act, um, was in a band called Piper. And uh, they only ever released two albums before they broke up. I can't uh, seem to remember right now why they broke up, if uh, there's even any record of that. But uh, I really like Billy Squire, and I also happen to really like Piper. The music's just a tad bit different than... Uh, Billy Squire solo, but uh, you can't really find these on, D on a CD, excuse me. There are a few releases, but they're ridiculously expensive. The vinyl, on the other hand, is not nearly as expensive. So um, I think this was actually the first album that I bought on vinyl, solely because I couldn't get it any other way. So um, yeah, that sort of was the the gateway drug, if you will, to me getting um, into vinyl. Here is another one of these Piper albums. You can see down here in the corner that this is a promotional copy, not for sale. So uh, this must have gone out to record companies or to, uh, more likely, I guess, uh, radio stations to try and get them to uh, potentially be interested in getting uh, some Piper albums to do that. Um, maybe up to record stores too to try and get them to sell some of these. But um, it's a re an interesting piece of history, I would say. Because I, uh, I, I don't know just how that uh, album came into, uh, you know, the retail market eventually. I'm sure someone, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, here's the best of Charlie Pride. Um, this has, hmm, Kalijah on it, yeah, um, a song that uh, probably wouldn't pass on uh, in many of the PC things of today, but is a, uh, an interesting song nonetheless, a song about a Native American cigar store Indian, uh, sung by a black man, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've got that, I've got another Charlie Pride album, where he's singing me and Bobby McGee. I still haven't gotten around to listening to this yet, but I do want to listen to that recording because that's a song I really like. It's also on the Roger Miller album that we saw just a little bit ago. Um, with Roger Miller maybe being one of the bigger performances of that song, and I think um, the most recent big one coming from Janis Joplin, who I don't have an album from, but nonetheless. Um, and here is another Charlie Pride album. Um, that's got Billy Bayou on it. Uh, another song that I think is pretty good, but I d haven't listened to Charlie Pride's version of it yet. So, um, here is Gunfighter Ballads and Trail Songs by Marty Robbins. Um, Marty Robbins is maybe most famous for his song um, El Paso. That's it. Um, he's had some other pretty big hits too, as a as a country artist, or at least. Uh, an older country artist, and uh, in the form of Big Iron and um, Running Gun, and yeah, there's a few others like that. I really like Marty Robbins, um, and this is, uh, in particular, this is on some pink vinyl, um, sort of the same color as you can see the album jacket is, and I, I really like that. Uh, I think I got that as a Christmas present last year. Uh, here is the Sex Pistols, Never Mind the Bollocks, and of course I think this was their only studio album, or at least the only one that I really know of, or uh, I've listened to some of their live stuff, I've never really enjoyed that, but I do like the the studio versions on here, and um, that is a repressing which I got at a record store in Denver. Uh, here is that same Simon and Garfunkel album that I uh, mentioned on cassette earlier, but in vinyl form here. So uh, the condition of this vinyl is pretty good, if I remember, and this is an original pressing, if I'm not mistaken. So that's something that uh, I really like listening to. Here is the best of the Statler Brothers, a uh, group I don't think too many people know of. Um, they do, again, some more kind of western swing style music. Um, this is not the Statler Brothers, in case that wasn't apparent to you. 
but um, in fact I'm not even sure where that picture comes from but nonetheless um, and regardless of all of that uh, the music that they did is pretty good something again I grew up listening to and so therefore have a sort of inclination to like um, and here are 24 of Hank Williams' greatest hits. Um, not a particularly good quality, and uh, it, it, even though it is across two albums, there's trying to squeeze 24 songs onto vinyl like that. Uh, and uh, mostly sort of live versions just doesn't come across extremely well, unfortunately, although I do really like Hank Williams. Um, and I've only got... 345s, I think. Here's uh, the Carpenters. That one has On Top of the World on it, which is really the only Carpenters song that I've ever listened to and enjoyed, but uh, it was good enough that for, I don't remember how much I paid for that, maybe a few cents, uh, it was worth picking up. Uh, here is The Who, uh, I Can't Explain. Uh, the B-sides of these albums, I don't remember what's on them. Uh, not really notable stuff, even, so... Um, I Can't Explain, though, is a really good song. And then uh, here we go. We got uh, El Paso by Marty Robbins. I got this album before I got the uh, the 33. So um, this was something I picked up just because I liked the song and uh, wanted to get it. Although this 45 is in really rough shape. So it's hard to listen to on here. And... The music comes across sounding pretty flat on it, on it unfortunately. But uh, I did like having it, and I don't listen to it very often anymore since I got the uh, repressing of the greatest uh, hits or, or whatever that album was. I don't remember. <laughs> unfortunately. All right, I think that's, uh, that's enough of looking at the vinyl here. Let's go upstairs, and I will show off... Uh, I will show off what I've got going on up there. Okay, so I'm going to try and be a little bit selective about uh, which parts of the room I'm showing you here because I've got kind of a mess in one corner of it, but uh, the majority of what we'll be looking at is pretty clean, so um, yeah. Here is the table, which I think those of you who saw me build my main PC will recall. Um, as it was the table that I used in that video just for building my PC on. It's probably going to be the same table that I'm going to use for filming the upcoming videos. So, uh, yep, yeah. then I've got a fan over there, not very interesting. The covers for my speakers that I use up here. And uh, speaking of those speakers, here they are. Um, they are by American Acoustics, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. A brand I've not heard of. I picked these up at a garage sale many, many years ago when I was probably not but 11 or 12 for 10 bucks. They sound pretty good. You know, they're no Polk speakers, but they're they're good enough. Um, here's my Vizio TV. Um, I don't know that that's ever shown up in a video before, but yeah, there it is. Um, with the PlayStation 2 hooked up to it and several games sitting down below. I've got a fireplace in here. And then over here, I have a Mac computer. Probably not something many of you saw coming. Um, since I... Uh, since I had made my video on the server that I built, I had gotten a MacBook just to try out the uh, Mac OS operating system since, well, I had tried to do some Hackintosh stuff. It got really messy very quickly, and uh, with the time constraints that I was dealing with, uh, I didn't really feel like uh, going down that rabbit hole any further than I had already gone. Um, which is to say, I had gotten macOS working, although not as recent a version as I had hoped to have gotten going, so this was just an easier solution for me to get the MacBook. And then I sold that after I got uh, fairly bored with it. Um, 
and didn't really need two laptops at the time. Now I don't have a laptop anymore, as I sold my Dell laptop, which I was using for school, uh, in order to help me pay to move out here. Um, and um, over the summer I got this computer instead as a way of sort of just keeping up with the Mac OS uh, times, although it's not receiving updates anymore. In fact, it doesn't even have the option for upgrading to Mac OS Mojave, but uh, I can use High Sierra on it, and so if there's ever some Mac-specific software, or if I need to be able to help out someone with a Mac-related issue, and I want to be able to make sure that I'm able to provide the best instructions possible, um, this should hopefully allow me to do that. There's not a whole lot that I do with it other than that. Um, and I've, I've explored a little bit of the development uh, side of Mac OS too, particularly, um, sort of ironically, with Microsoft um, and their new .NET Core framework for um, building applications in a cross-platform environment where you can use Windows Forms on uh, the Mac or on Linux, but uh, it uses XAML and that's a side of Windows Forms and WPF that I haven't ventured into very much yet, so I'm still sort of slowly learning about that. Uh, I really, really am more familiar with the old .NET framework version of Windows Forms with C Sharp, so um, and that's something else that I do with it, and not much more than that. Um, this is a an Ethernet switch, which I'm planning to have another device hooked up to, um, using this as the host adapter for uh, getting some internet up here, um, since the thing that I'll be plugging in up here probably won't have Wi-Fi. That being my music production PC, since I have some of my music stuff up here. <laughs> and I'll probably be moving some of the music stuff you saw downstairs up here, and some of the uh, not quite as good stuff that's up here down there instead. Such as this, which was my first uh, acoustic guitar. Um, mostly, really, to say, my first guitar at all. It's a Fender Starcaster. That's not a Stratocaster. It is a Starcaster, uh, an introductory unit that they had produced um, for quite a while. I don't think they're making them anymore, though. And it's not a great guitar, but, you know, it sounds good enough to practice on here and there. So um, here I've got my Hammond chord organ. It is a unit from the 50s, if we were to look in the back, which I don't think I'm going to do today. Um, this is powered by tubes. Um, there's no transistors in this at all. It's all tube powered and uh, it, it's kind of cool in that regard, but and it's got a lot of settings to make the sounds different, but it seems to me whenever I try and play anything it comes across as the sort of generic organ creepy sound, so I don't mess around with it too much, but understandably I would want it to be a part of my music production suite, since it's the only sort of keyboard thing I have um, at this time. So that, that's part of the reason why the music production PC is going to be coming up here. This table is probably going to be swapped out for that table instead. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this table. Start using it as a dinner table, probably, so I don't have to use the uh, the breakfast bar area. Um, back here I've got my clarinet. It is a Yamaha Allegro. I don't play it very much anymore. Uh, and not nearly to the degree which I did in high school, um, but I do still have it, and I can play it a little bit, I guess. Um, there's a harmonica set, and then there is uh, my Fender Stratocaster electric guitar here, and a Line 6 amp, both of which I got together as a part of an 
auction from a radio station around Billings, Montana. And for not very expensive, I think around 60 bucks, and I believe that this Stratocaster is considered vintage at this point. It was one of the first Squire series uh, of Stratocasters that was ever made, but before Squire started to be deemed its own brand. And um, this unit, I've looked up the serial code on, and it's apparently from 1993. I don't know if it's worth anything extra because it's of that sort of vintage, but um, yeah, I do have it anyway. And here, in the middle of the room, I've got some new parts. Stuff that's come in. And um, there's supposed to be one more thing on the way. Um, so I've got some SATA cables here, a case, and a power supply, and some RAM. Those are going to be used in the upcoming videos for all of the PC upgrade stuff that I'm going to be doing. Um, so I think that that's going to be everything though, guys. Um, for this video anyway. So look forward to the other stuff that's going to be coming up pretty soon. Um, but for now, I think that's all I've got. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.